Um, let's talk a bit more actually about your course because as you said, Rupert Snell, who um, is a professor and I believe director of the Hindi Urdu flagship at the University of Texas in Austin, who is a very big name yes. in Hindi, yeah. has listened to your course yeah. and has enjoyed it. Parts so, of it. He, he's listened it. to parts of it because I sent him a, a one long track and he right. found it was, so it that's, was good. That's really good news. Yeah. Um, how did you make, um, you, you talked about having to listen to other non-European um, courses to kind of understand how it worked with Hindi because a lot of Michelle Thomas relies on cognates mm. and similarities between languages. So how did you make it work with Hindi? Are there more similarities than maybe one would assume? As you may know, Hindi is part of uh, the Indo-European group of languages, you know, okay. unlike something like Chinese or Arabic, mm -hmm. uh, where, you know, the word for mother, father, or, you know, counting one to ten would sound completely different mm -hmm. from French or English. But to give you an example, you know, mother is ma in Hindi. It's a good example, you know, and mm -hmm. father is pita, like pater in Latin, okay. you know, and brother is bhai, bra, comes from brata in uh, Sanskrit, which sounds like brother, yes. you know, even Russian is brat, you know, in this group of Indo-European group of language, you have lots of similarities like this. And, you know, mm, numbers, you know, uh, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in Hindi would be che, sat, at, no, and thus, which reminds uh -huh. us a bit of, you know, deca, you yeah. know, deci, decimal. Uh -huh. yeah. So it's the same family on the one hand. And besides, uh, for the past couple of centuries, at least, there's been direct contact between English and Indian languages because mm. of British rule in India. So huge uh, amount of English vocabulary has just flowed into, you know, Indian languages, you know. And vice versa. Yes. With things, just like you get tandoori or naan yep, or samosa, exactly. which flows with the thing mm -hmm. into English. Words like, you know, radio, whatever, mm -hmm. uh, get into um, Hindi. And also, you know, complex vocabulary today. In different epochs, you know, different eras, there's uh, always in the world uh, around you uh, the important language. At some time it was probably Sanskrit. Mm -hmm. Then there was, it was Persian. Yeah. So when you said complicated things, you used more Persian vocabulary. Like in English, when you say complicated things, you use, you know, Latin-based and yeah. Greek-based words, you know, like philosophy or, you know, alienation or whatever, yeah. you know, and that changes. And what has happened now, it's no longer Persian or Sanskrit, which uh, where you go looking for the comp complicated words, but English, mm. you know. So the way we speak today, although it's not approved officially in school, for instance, mm. is, uh, you know, uh, code mixing. Yeah. Uh, we construct the sentence in Hindi, but we fill it up with loads of English words. It's, uh, I had given an example, uh, you know, in, during the recording of the course, uh, to say, uh, uh, at present, the political situation in India is extremely, uh, is very unpredictable. And the way I would say it in my family would, would be, Aajkal, India me political situation bahut unpredictable hai. I can do that. Yeah. So you see how easy it is? Yeah. So you so, really use this kind of change in what's going on in languages in the world yes. to your benefit. And this wasn't course. approved, you know, by the official media, you know, when there was only one te television channel in India mm. called Doordarshan and an All India Radio. All this was rather stuffy. Yeah. And then in the 90s, it all changed with lots of private channels. And then people started speaking on television like they speak at home. Wow. And suddenly we saw that it was possible, even in respectable places yeah. like cinema, mm -hmm. you know, a film like Monsoon Wedding by Mira Nair. Yeah. You see a Delhi family mixing, you know, yeah, Punjabi, true. English, mm -hmm. Hindi, everything. And it sounds so natural. Mm -hmm. And language is changing, you know, all the time in India. And it sounds like your course is very up to date then. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. You, know? mm -hmm. um, you said earlier that this was your first time teaching Hindi in English, yes. well, using Michelle Thomas' method. So can you tell us some of the differences you've found in teaching Hindi to French learners and now to English learners? 
Yes, of course, I had prepared, you know, my notes and my prompts and all that. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no point pretending I hadn't. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> uh, apparently, Michelle Thomas just walked into the studio and without any notes and just he did, did but it. He had been teaching uh, I, I for many, many years yes. and had perfected his method. He method's just honed it, you yes, know. Yes, but he was yeah, yeah. amazing. No, yeah, knowing that almost. I was going to teach English-speaking uh, people, uh, especially, I had to prepare. Mm -hmm. And I knew that uh, they don't have the same problem. For instance, pronunciation, you know. Mm. Uh, there's the soft T, you know, ta, as in Toma, Michelle mm -hmm. Toma, mm -hmm. you know, uh, which we have in Hindi. And uh, people in the UK and the US would find it difficult to say ta probably and would say ta, mm. you know, ta, Thomas. Yeah. And uh, instead of saying tum, which means you, they might say tum, yeah. tum, you know, with a British accent. Yes. So I knew that we had to get them to work on that. Okay. You know, the dental soft T and how to describe, you know, you know, the tip of your tongue against the upper teeth and say ta, ta, like that. Ta. So, and in France, there are other problems, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, the English speakers have a problem with not, uh, with straight vowels, like a, Yeah, pure e, vowels. It's you know, it's yeah. diphthong. Yeah, and the English speakers tend to, you know, instead of saying London may, London may, which is in London, mm -hmm. you know, post positions instead of prepositions, you say London in okay. in Hindi. So that's London may. And from London would be uh, London say. Mm. So the problem I had, if you can call it a problem, is, you know, uh, the English speaking people, the American girl in the studio, mm -hmm. she would say London may yes. or uh, London say. say. You know, With the dip thong, so the wise You had yeah. to kind of torture her and, <laughs> uh, and get it right and straight. Not yeah. say, yeah. but say. Uh, the French people can do that easier. Yes, but they have other problems, you know, Okay. with Hindi. So you get used to that. That's very mm. interesting. Mm. Um, what should someone expect to learn in your Start Hindi course? Because it is only a starter course. I believe yes. it's two hours. Yes. Uh, two and a half, more, I, two I think. And a half? Yes, okay. yes, at least. What should they expect to get out of it? Uh, I was quite um, unorthodox about it because usually... Even the good Hindi courses like Teach Yourself, mm -hmm. uh, they think we should begin with a verb like I speak, mm -hmm. you know, and present tense and so on. Uh, but I didn't do that. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to make it immediately useful and say things like I'd like, you know, okay. uh, where is, asking questions, you know, what is this? So there are very few verbs in this, you know, first long session of, you know, two and a half hours. Okay. There are lots of uh, interrogatives. Uh, and there are, um, in Indian languages, you have an interesting uh, structure which you use when you're not uh, doing something deliberately. Like instead of speaking or eating, if you like something mm. or if you detest something, it's considered that it's not something you're doing. It's something that's happening to you. Mm. So you have this, you know, structure uh, called the experiential you know, construction, although we don't use any of these jargons in the Michel Thomas course, okay. uh, uh, which goes like, uh, to me, coffee wanted, you know. Okay. And there's one word for wanted, which works for everyone. That's chahiye. So there's no conjugation, there's no complications, but you have to learn things like, you know, John wants, so to John, coffee wanted, uh -huh. to, um, you know, Mary, uh, Lassie wanted. Uh -huh. So this kind of stuff has very little grammar, in fact, in a way. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we're not doing much uh, conjugation and much grammar, but it's immediately useful. Yeah. You know, so some people might be surprised to see that there's no present tense of the word speak. Yeah. You know, but how many times would you say, you know, I speak when you're in a real conversation, you know, yeah. on a train in India? It's true. I mean, in some ways, you can say it's unorthodox compared to a lot of traditional courses. Yes. But it's very true to Michelle Thomas because it is the most useful language and it's a natural building block. And sometimes we think we learn languages by the easiest verb and the easiest conjugation. But actually, you can learn it more about what's most useful, what's yes. most frequent, yes. Yes. Um, and base it on those structures yes. and yes. build them up. So. And interestingly, the present tense is not the easiest thing to begin with in Hindi. Oh, okay. It gets complicated. In fact, it's easier to use the past tense uh, or the future tense than the present tense because the present tense, I speak, is not a simple uh, tense. It's a composed tense. So that huh. could get confusing if you begin with that. All right. You know, so that's another reason not to 
you know. You definitely thought yeah, it through very carefully. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to do the course myself. Um, okay, a few more questions just about language learning in general, and then I want to go to uh, some questions from Michelle Thomas fans. Um, you speak at least three languages that I know. Um, what do you think is the key to learning a language well? Listening well, mm. you know, in context. I'm, I'm obsessed with this idea, which uh, Michelle was obsessed with also, that speaking a language is all about speaking it. I mean, it's not mm -hmm. writing and, you know, conjugating verbs and making tables that will help you to speak better, you know, which is why I keep giving this example of, you know, the dance class and swimming mm -hmm. class and get down to, you know, actually swimming. Okay. Uh, so the key to it is uh, listening carefully uh, and in context. You know, so in the Michel Thomas approach also, the way I try to do it, I try to put in some, you know, real situations like, you know, get some panic in your voice and ask, where's the toilet? <laughs> you know, or what's that? You know, you see some, or, or things like, wow. Okay. You know, I think that uh, all these um, expressive, you know, interjections mm -hmm. like, hey, or wow, or what? You know, it's, it's very useful. And yeah. it, uh, if you do them well, you know, if you learn them like you're you know doing theater yeah and not be afraid you, you can be absolutely fluent using only a few words mm -hmm. but use them fluently there's a way of saying what yeah you know which makes you sound like a a, a native speaker you know and it can come in useful yeah you hear a, a price of the carpet you know in india and you say what <laughs> and there it it goes and down, it down. <laughs> yeah. you know with one word kya <laughs> <laughs> you know, I like that. so you have to get it under the under your skin. Okay. And you know, get in context, put yourself in you know, in a situation in somebody's shoes. Yeah, I think say. that's very good advice. Um, and in a world where visual content is so important today, you know, YouTube, everybody searches there now instead of even Google. Why do you think an audio-only course works and is still relevant? Mm. I'm not very sure. I, I wouldn't say that visual is not useful, mm. but I think you can concentrate more on you know, on the sentence, the way you have to construct it, you know, and you can imagine your own visuals. You know, mm. when, you, when you're your own, asked, of what are you doing if you're say, learning this? I mean, you can imagine whatever happened, you know, shocking thing is going on in front of you. And uh, you can you can just make it up as you go along. I think it's, you know, it's quite useful doing that. Yeah. And I remember once I was teaching somebody uh, over Skype and one day it didn't work, the visual. And we just decided to use the phone. And then that student said, you know, actually, I prefer doing just the phone without seeing and, you know, being face to face because then I totally concentrate on the sound, mm -hmm. on the sentence. You know, so I was quite uh, interested in that reaction. Yeah, and I said, yeah, is... she says phone is better because... Of course, sitting face to face is best, but uh, from a distance, she said, "There's no need for us to, you know, even see each other, and we can just, uh, just concentrate on the sound." And she found it more suitable. Oh, fantastic! I think it depends on people. You know? Yeah, that's true. Obviously, it's useful, uh, you know, watching movies where there's context, you can see what's going on, or watching real people doing things mm. with with language. Yeah. You know, a dance class where a teacher would say, you know, now get up and you see people getting up and you know what's going on yeah. because there's the visual. Yes. You can't uh, deny that. Yeah. You know. I think it's about combining yes. different ways different of different approaches. Um, and my last question is, what is the best advice you could give to someone learning Hindi or starting to learn Hindi? Mm. Well, use the Michelle Thomas method. <laughs> there you obviously. go. <laughs> Watch a lot of movies. There are a lot out yeah. there. Oh, so that's loads and loads. And now yeah. uh, subtitling is getting better. Okay. You know, earlier this was a big problem. There was, you know, horrible mm. translations which made no sense, you know, done by some kind of, you know, machine translations. Yes. And they added to the fun, of course, because they didn't make sense. But now you have lots of good movies. Mm, I, I just saw Queen, which is hilarious about uh, an Indian young lady who whose wedding gets cancelled at the last moment, but she decides to go on her honeymoon anyway, <laughs> alone, to Paris and Amsterdam. And it's oh, hilarious. Wonderful. It's wonderful. And good subtitles. Mm. 
I've noticed on flights like Emirates, you know, I don't know who does that, you know, I, I, maybe it's airlines financing all that, but they have wonderful subtitles in English, yeah. good English subtitles, good. you know, so that's improving. Yeah. Uh, and uh, first, maybe you can watch with the subtitles if you're learning a language and then try and watch without yeah. as much as possible. And that helps. I know some uh, very good students of Hindi and I always ask them, how did you do it? Mm. And I get different approaches. Mm. You know, one of them, uh, I call it the Jonathan method because Jonathan told me what he did. <laughs> you know, so I always talk about the Jonathan method. He says, I keep making up stories and conversations while I'm at work. You know, he's a computer engineer. He says, I just make up things that are going on and I'm speaking in Hindi and I'm in different situations. And I make up what I have to say and what I hear. And I just keep doing that. That's brilliant. So I just call that Jonathan's method. And there was another person who said she just uh, didn't start speaking uh, without doing a few years of just watching. Okay. That's an, And she's very good. So I'm sure the different approaches that work for different people. Yeah. Uh, but I found that uh, teaching this way, the, the Michelle Thomas method, was generally very, very effective. Okay, for most. Yes, people. yes. Yeah. Okay, a few questions from the fans. Um, this was from Zane Leach. How did you learn the Michelle Thomas method? Did you simply study through the courses that have already been made, or is there another way? Mm -hmm. And we know that you've listened to the Yes, courses, I partly right? answered that question, you know, yeah. when I heard about this uh, Michelle Thomas method for the first time, and Rupert sent me a mail saying, have you seen this? Mm -hmm. And do you think you'd like to do this? So I hadn't seen any. So I just got in touch with uh, Hodder and they sent me samples. Oh, nice. So, and I loved it. So yeah. that's how I, and I did a bit of, you know, I pretended to learn a bit of, you know, Chinese and Arabic. Yeah. You know, I can say pizza, please. Yeah. You know, mumkin pizza. Mumkin pizza, min fadlak. Wow. That's, it, it came in useful. The first sentence of the lesson of lesson one, because I had to ask for a visa to go to Morocco mm -hmm. in Paris. And I just had to change one letter from pizza to visa. And I just went <laughs> there and said, Mumkin visa min fadlak. And they were so happy. They just jumped up and, you and know, you got your visa, I no got problem. my visa in minutes. <laughs> That's amazing. After one sentence. And you also said that you, over time, improved the method as well because I remember when I got in touch with you this course had been planned for a while yes. and then postponed and you said yes. it's actually a good thing because I've made it even better yes I, I yeah there's always something good in whatever you know yeah. what you think is unfortunate you know this constant delay in publishing the Hindi thing it went on for a few years in fact yeah. uh, because of reorganization I suppose yeah. of, you know here uh, but it gave me a chance to you know get better yeah yes exactly. Yeah. So that's good. The learners mm. will have benefited then. <laughs> I hope so. This is from Michael, I'll probably ruin this last name, Kowalczyk. 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 Mm. <laughs> Maybe. Um, he wants to know when we should expect the entire Hindi course of total perfect and vocabulary. Um, from our perspective, we do want to publish that. Good uh, question. Total you soon. have the answer. Yeah, we're hoping 2016. <laughs> Not me. You have the time. Yes. Oh, yes. yes, of course, I'm dying to do this. Okay, great. Yeah, I, I have practically all, practically all of this ready yeah. because I've had time to, you know, do all that. So the, whenever you decide to record, okay. give me a few weeks' notice and, Fantastic. Do, and I'll hop over to London on the Eurostar. <laughs> Watch this space. Um, Liang Shi said, what is it like to be working with one of the best language teaching programs and putting your own native language out there for language learners all around the world to learn from? Oh, it's very exciting. In fact, uh, more than 20 years ago, I had, uh, I, I am the author of a uh, Hindi course in French called Asimil. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you know about Asimil. Yes, I do. You know, Le Hindi Sans Pen, all of them are called, you know, with ease, without, without suffering, pain. without pain. Yeah. So I did that in 1994. It was published, and it's still, uh, you know, selling. Okay. Uh, but the for the English-speaking audience, it's much bigger. You know, it's a wider yeah, spe sweep. So true. that makes me much more excited because, from Japan to Poland to you know uh, Africa, uh, people can use it. Yeah. Because English is English. Mm. You know. Yeah, we're very French has lost ground, you know, I suppose. I don't know. I'm not very sure whether French has really lost ground. But there's no comparison between no, a, a yeah. Hindi course for French speakers and a Hindi course for English speakers, you know. Yeah. 
and um, I'm very excited about you know doing this. Cool, good. Um, last question from Nitya Swaruba. Mm -hmm. The Michel Thomas method is mainly for learning to speak a language. Yes. The booklet will have Hindi, and people might be curious about the script. I assume she's talking about. What course do you recommend is the best to learn to read and write Hindi? Mm, very interesting question because here we, you know, get to this question of scripts. Mm. And uh, Hindi, Urdu is the same language, two scripts. So what we now officially call Hindi is written in the Devanagari script, mm -hmm. uh, which is often referred to as the Sanskrit script, but that is a misnomer because Sanskrit itself has no script, unlike Latin, you say Latin script, Roman mm -hmm. script. But Sanskrit can be written in any script in the world because basically Sanskrit has to be properly pronounced. Okay. It's a spoken thing, you know. It's The whole thing is about saying it well, you know, to get the bright effects and not, uh, you know, it, it, it can be written in the Tamil script, in the Bengali script, and in the Roman script. And uh, I'm often tempted to say, this I'm going to be a bit provocative and get beaten <laughs> up for it, is that even Hindi uh, need not have one script, you know. Uh, that's what we've done, in fact, uh, with Start Hindi in the little booklet. Yeah. We haven't used any script at all. And one of the uh, best sellers uh, you, you have already, Speak Hindi with Confidence by Rupert Snell mm -hmm. in the Teach Yourself series, uh, has a booklet which has all the dialogues in, well, the Roman script, like yeah, English, yeah. you know, with some diacritical marks, mm -hmm. which uh, we decided to do away with, in fact. Like the long R would have a straight line on the on the A, mm -hmm. you know, the Macron. Yep. And we decided to simplify it further, uh, you know, with the editor, Virginia Catmore, and just use a double R in the middle and, you know, yeah. use capital D for the hard D, you know, things like that, instead of trying to put a dot under the D, which might get, you know, deformed on your screen, you know, your smartphone or whatever, iPad. Yeah. And you never know what might happen to, you know, these uh, diacritical marks. That's true. It's probably know? a wise decision. So we decided uh, to do it with that and use what we like to call uh, an improved version of the Bollywood transcription, mm. you know, method. You know, film posters in India or CDs and cassettes have the names of songs, you know, yeah. and they're always in the Roman script. And people sending SMS or, you know, mails even, uh, more and more just taking the easy way out so and it's writing. it's more universal, though. It's the easy way out, but then you don't have the problem of Urdu and Hindi, as you said. In fact, yes. Uh, Indians and Pakistanis uh, discussing on forum on a forum yeah. can immediately read each other. Mm. That's the good thing. Mm -hmm. Many people will say it's a bad thing because yeah. a language must have its own script. Right. But in the case of Indian languages, I'm, I'm not sure, you know. In fact, one of our most uh, reputed linguists of India, you know, uh, Suniti Kumar Chatterjee, who's a great friend of Tagore's and spoke many languages, he wrote a whole book uh, called A Roman Alphabet for India and tried to argue that we should modernize, like Turkey. Yeah. You know what happened to Turkish language in the 20s when Kamal, you know, Ataturk Pasha took over and decided to modernize yeah. And part of that modernization was to get rid of the Arabic script for Turkish and use the Roman script. Yeah. That's a big debate. Uh, but I suspect, you know, I have a feeling in my bones that this is going to happen wow. to Indian languages. Just watch watch this space. You heard it here first. <laughs> and uh, should we lament? Should we weep over it? Yeah. I'm not sure. I'm not one of those. I bet you the conversation would be a bit different if you were in France, where they still are very strict about what you can do and can't do with the language there. Although. That's why I'm so lucky teaching in this section where we don't concentrate on the reading and writing and the exams and the grades mm. and doing it right, but the practical, pragmatic, you know, uh, side, yeah. getting to speak. So while you're doing that, there's very little, you know, to... Of course, we don't use the Urdu script, I mean, the Perso-Arabic script because it says Hindi, you know? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I've i learned that most uh, universities in the U.S. and Canada, etc., they get uh, students to do both scripts, which I think is a good idea, mm -hmm. you know. Mm, to, we can if do, away from India and Pakistan, very often you can do things which are not easy to do 
for political and religious and other reasons in India and Pakistan, mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. So sometimes we can um, have somebody from a distance you giving you a good example, you know. Very enlightening, actually. Mm -hmm. um, well, thank you. That's all I have. So thank you very much for taking thank the time. Thank you very much for having um, me. To wrap things up, I'm going to play a sample of your course so that we can give listeners a sneak preview as well. Thank you. Thank you.